Hey friends, Dylan Bates here with the Final Cut Bro. The video world is really starting to ramp up and take more and more of my time, so I unfortunately didn't have enough time to film an intro. However, I thought that this badly done painting representing my ugly mug might do the trick. That being said, this week we are going to be creating a stop motion effect for Final Cut Pro. Now don't get me wrong, doing stop motion for real is far better than just creating a simple effect to slap onto your footage, so if you have the time and budget to do that, I strongly suggest that you do. But this is a great workaround if you do not have the time. So without further ado, let's get started. Open up motion, go to Final Cut Effect, set your preset to either 4K or 1080, whichever you're going to be using more frequently. Set your frame rate to 60 frames per second, and that will actually be important for this particular effect. Set your duration to however long you would like. I'll just leave it at four seconds and open that. So now that we're within motion, we can actually select our effect source, go to filters, time, strobe. And now that we have our strobe effect on here, we can actually rename that to stop motion just for ease of use later on. Now, if we look within our inspector, we can see that the strobe rate is actually what is going to affect our frames per second within our project. So what we're going to do is come over to this down arrow, select that, and we're going to create a new rig, a new slider rig actually. And this will allow us to work within the parameters within Final Cut Pro without having to jump back and forth between motion and Final Cut Pro. What we're going to do is wherever this blue dot is, that means we can set a range point. So when I drag this to zero, if I change our effect source to one, and then I drag it all the way up to 100 and set our effect source to 60. Now, as I drag this slider, you'll see how it is affected down below. Next, we'll notice that if we drag this to zero, it says zero frames per second when it's actually running at one frame per second. So we're gonna change that so it's easily readable within Final Cut Pro. So come down to your range minimum and set that to one frame per second. Now drag that up to 100 and we'll set the range maximum to 60. Now we can easily read how many frames per second it is playing back the video. Now I find that the default is really good to set at around like 15 frames per second and that's where the effect really starts to show. So we're going to set it to 15 and when we publish this to Final Cut Pro it will actually save that default. Now we're just going to rename our slider to frames per second and we're going to come down to our frames per second slider click on the down arrow and push publish now we can come up to file and do save or push command s if that is easier for you we're just going to call this the stop motion effect then we can set our category to stop motion and you can set a theme if you would like and we will just push publish now that will automatically push it into Final Cut Pro. So let's go ahead and open that up. So now that we're within Final Cut Pro, we can actually go to our effects browser, scroll on down and find our stop motion effect and drag that right on top. And you'll see that now that we saved it at 15 frames per second, that will be the default. Now, if we play this back, let's see how it's starting to look. Right now it's a little juddery and weird, but we can fix that pretty easily. So. One thing with stop motion is it typically tends to move a lot faster, like with time lapses and such. So let's go ahead and speed this up. So select your clip and push command R. And then we will just drag this up to something like, you know, 408% or so. And let's play it back and see how that's looking. There we go. It's starting to have that real jittery um, stop motion look to it. Now one thing that I could have probably done to improve this shot is to get rid of the motion blur. So I should have probably brought my shutter angle to something a little higher. I shot this at um, 1 60th, but I probably should have done something like 1 80th or even 1 100th. And, uh, and I think that would have improved it a bit. But I think it looks pretty accurate to how stop motion would be. Now this is it without the effect. This just looks sped up. But with the effect, it looks much more jittery and more like stop motion does. Hopefully that tutorial was helpful to you. If it was, consider pressing that like button as it helps my channel out tremendously. And also consider subscribing as I have new videos just like this one every single Wednesday just for you. I appreciate you guys stopping by so much. And until next time, peace.